Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about how the Mitsubishi Evolution's all-wheel drive system works. Now if you've watched my video on the review of the Mitsubishi Evo or my comparison with the Subaru STI, you may have heard me say something silly like it has an 80-20 nominal torque split. There is in fact no nominal torque split, I apologize for the misinformation, but you may have also read in the comments people saying it always has a 50-50 torque split. That isn't true either. So we're going to get into the details of how this system works and talk about the actual torque split of the center differential as well as the other differentials that it has. So starting with a simple layout, now this isn't representative of what it actually looks like, uh, but this helps illustrate the idea. So we've got our four cylinder engine here, it's sending power to a center differential, this is an active center differential, uh, it gets the term active because it has a clutch pack which can lock it up, so it acts more like a locked differential rather than an open differential. It acts like an open differential when the clutch pack is not compressed, uh, so it will have a 50-50 torque split in that scenario, it will not have a 50-50 split when the clutch pack is closed up. Now torque either goes to the front where it's split through a helical limited slip differential and this is a purely mechanical limited slip differential, there's no electronics, nothing like that. Um, and so it's mechanical, it's always working and it basically uses gearing and friction for the torque split. So if one side can receive a certain amount of torque but the other side has more grip, it can kind of essentially multiply the amount of torque that goes to the other side through that differential, the other side will get more torque uh, based on grip. Now at the rear, Mitsubishi employs something that they call active yaw control. And so what this does actually is it controls the yaw of the vehicle or its rotation um, when looking down at it vertically like this. And so what this active torque vectoring differential can do basically is essentially send 100% of the torque wherever it wants, to one wheel or the other that it receives from the center differential. So when you're going around a corner, it'll send more torque to the outside wheel to help you rotate around that corner as you're accelerating out of it uh, in order to better turn around the corner so you can have better handling. And so that's what this can do. It can split the torque 100% to the left, 100% to the right. And how it does this is there's two clutch packs in here, one for the left side, one for the right side. And those clutch packs redirect the torque through gearing. So you can think of it essentially as another center differential and then it's splitting it between two more center differentials. So these clutch packs combined with the planetary gearing setups that they use uh, act as second differentials that can reroute the torque. And so the torque comes back to a center differential and then it goes to one of two clutch packs which redirects it to either wheel. So that's how the system overall looks. But let's get into more detail of what's in this red box right here. What's this center differential look like? And so that's what we've got drawn right here. So here we have our engine. It's sending power to the transmission. And then the power from the transmission is being geared to this active center differential. Now here's our two front wheels. Here's our two rear wheels. Clearly things aren't to scale. And so what we've got is as this red differential here rotates, and keep in mind everything that's one color will rotate together. So this gear here is going to force this to rotate. So we're looking at a cross section. Uh, this will be an entire gear right here that's rotating with this. And that's going to rotate these two smaller spider gears. And so as these gears rotate, they're going to pass the torque to either the front or rear wheels. So let's look at the case of sending it to the front wheels. So our power comes here, it goes through here, it transfers to this blue gear right here, which then, as you can see, rotates these set of spider gears right here. And so those rotate, they rotate these gears, and those gears rotate the two front wheels. Now, in reality, I've drawn this here basically as an open differential, and this is in fact a helical limited slip differential, but you get the idea of how that works, how the torque split works for the active center differential. So if we want to send power to the back, what we do is we send that here, it goes to this purple gear, and that purple gear rotates this outer uh, housing here, and so that rotates, meshed with this gear, another shaft which goes to the back, sends it to the active yaw control, and then that splits it between the rear wheels. So you can see these are geared the same to this. So when this clutch pack right here is uncompressed, we've got an open differential, and we're sending 50% of the power to the front wheels, and 50% of the power to the rear wheels. Now what happens when we lock this clutch pack up? So it applies uh, hydraulic pressure and tries to lock up that clutch pack. Well essentially what that does is it means this blue and this purple now have to rotate together. And in doing that, uh, in an open differential, usually these two sides can always rotate at different speeds. Once they're rotating at the same speed, they are now locked, and so torque goes where it 
has available grip. So if the front of the car has more grip than the rear of the car, it's gonna get more torque sent to it. If the rear of the car has more grip than the front of the car, it's gonna get more torque sent to it. So let's look at some different examples using the entire system and see how it acts in different scenarios. So if you're accelerating in a straight line, it's gonna lock up that center clutch pack and in doing that, it allows the torque to go where it's needed. And so in this situation, we've got uh, you know, you're gonna have weight transfer to the rear under acceleration. So when you lock up that center clutch pack, it's gonna send more torque to the rear and more torque is gonna be uh, at the rear because you have more load back there so you can accelerate faster. Now in this situation, the right side is over water so it has less grip than the left side. Well, with our helical limited slip differential up front, more torque can be sent to the left side and with our uh, torque vectoring differential, more torque can be sent to the left side so we can accelerate stronger uh, because of these front and rear differentials and we can also accelerate stronger because we've locked it and we're able to send more torque to the rear than the front. Okay, what happens if you're going around a corner and you're accelerating? Well, in this case, you open up the center differential. And the reason you do this is because all of the wheels are gonna be rotating at different speeds. If you lock them all up together, you're gonna have one wheel scrubbing or you're gonna have bind within your drivetrain and you don't wanna have that. So you open up the center differential and then you use the other differentials to help uh, with the rotation. So if, for example, your torque that is being sent to the rear, you send that to the outside tire of going around that corner and that helps you accelerate through it, helps control the yaw and helps you rotate around that corner. Okay, so what happens if you're braking in a straight line? Well, in this situation, the center clutch pack is also gonna lock up. And the reason it does this is for braking stability. So most of your braking, of course, is done by your brakes. Uh, but some of it will be through engine braking and because you have more load transfer to the front, the front will be supplying more of that than the rear. And so by locking up the center differential, you can use the front to slow it down more and help keep things more stable than if you did not do that. Now moving on, what if we had uh, the two front wheels on the ground and then the two rear wheels in the air on the side of a cliff? So let's say you're drifting around a cliff, uh, your friend Brian is running on a bus and he wants to catch your rear spoiler, uh, but you're not that great at driving so you accidentally slip off the rear and so now your car's sticking out a little bit, but you need to accelerate back onto that cliff. Well, common scenario, what do you do under this situation? Well, you floor it, obviously, you wanna get back onto the uh, ground. And so what's happening in this situation is that center differential is going to lock up because it wants to send torque to the front. And so by locking up, it's gonna send as much torque as it possibly can. And this may be somewhere in the region of 80, 20. You know, it's not gonna be a set specific amount. It's however much that torque the clutch pack itself can allow by locking up. There's a maximum pressure that this clutch pack can have. And if you exceed that force, you're gonna have slip in there. And so you are gonna be sending some torque to the rear wheels because you are gonna have some slip in that scenario. And so the rear wheels are gonna be spinning, but you're gonna try and send most of it to the front so that you can accelerate uh, and save Brian. Now, what if you only have one rear wheel on the ground and the other three are in the air? And I don't really know how this would ever happen, but if it was and you were in that scenario and Mitsubishi designers put in the software uh, in order to make this happen, uh, essentially what the system would try to do is it would lock up the center differential it's gonna be trying to send all of the power, obviously, to the rear because the rear has the one tire that's on the ground. And then you have the active yaw control, your torque vectoring differential, which, which can send all of the torque to one side. So what it's going to try and do is lock up that clutch pack and send all of the torque to the rear. Now, once again, it's an unrealistic scenario. And in this scenario, what's really gonna happen is you're gonna have some clutch slip and all the wheels are gonna be spinning, uh, but you're gonna be sending as much as you possibly can to that one rear wheel to try and accelerate and then, you know, fly into the air and now you have no wheels on the ground for whatever reason you needed to do that. But essentially that's what it would try to do in that scenario. Now, the Mitsubishi Evo also has different driver modes. So you can put it on tarmac, you can put it on gravel, and you can put it on snow. Well, what is that doing? Well, what that does is it changes when the clutch pack in the center differential decides hey, it's okay to lock up, or hey, we should uh, open up now. And of course, there's other things that are gonna be happening with the stability control and traction control and things like that. But just referring to the active center differential, what's happening in this scenario is you're going around a corner, and if you have it in tarmac mode because you're driving on a road, it's gonna open up that center differential very early on in the corner. And that allows for the different speeds of the different wheels, as we mentioned previously, about accelerating through a corner. 
and then it'll wait until almost the very last second until when you're straightening out in order to lock back up if you start accelerating hard so that you can get maximum acceleration. Now if you put it in gravel or snow, what it does is it delays that and so you keep it locked later and you lock it back up earlier. And so the duration for which it's opened is much smaller uh, because conditions will allow for some slip and you basically wanna maximize the traction you have uh, in order to put down power in those situations or for stability in the braking situation and so it delays it. So that's what these different tarmac, gravel, and snow settings are for. So hopefully that clears everything up. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching.